Hey up YouTube, it's Sam from Sam's Garden Maintenance. Now, as the title suggests, and no, I've not lost my mind, winter work. Yes, I know it's time to talk about it. But why, Sam? We're only halfway through this. We're only starting the season. What's up with you? Well, unfortunately, I'll tell you the situation I'm in. Winters for me are always a stressful time. Uh, the last winter was actually okay, you know, muddled through it fine. Is this winter going to be the same? Probably. Is it going to be better? Maybe. But what happens if it's worse? You know, and I think that this winter is going to be better or as good as last year. And I'll, you know, take a bit of a backpedal. Well, I don't want that. I like to be prepared. And I think you guys should be prepared. And this is why I'm doing this video now. Because people worry about winter towards the end of the season. I worry about winter now. So for me, my winter sort of plan is starting now. It, to be fair, it starts at the beginning of the year in the sense that what I do is every month I put a little bit of money over so I've got money saved up for winter because I don't know what winter's going to be like. It could be terrible weather and I could have no work on. I could be in hospital. You know, you name it. I, I don't know what winter is. So I need to save for winter and there's no point saving for winter at the end of the season because your work's getting less and less and less. And therefore, your money is getting less and less and less. How it is now, my money's going up and up and up and up. So I need to save for winter, basically. Now, there's two things I... And there's other ways to boost winter work, but I'm going to give you a couple of different ways. Now, look at what work you've got going on now. Look at what customers you've had in the past. Can you push some of this work towards the back end of the season? And that's what I'm thinking of doing this year. Now, first off, what work can be done? Well, I suppose you can do any work, really, that you would now in winter. Obviously, if it's some niche plant that needs to be planted, you know, or sowing grass seed, I don't know. Or putting turf down, you know, maybe it's better now, maybe it's better in winter. Who knows? I've not laid turf. But for me... I like to think about what can actually be done. And well, what sort of winters do we have here? Well, if it's not hoff level frozen cold, it's pissing it down with rain. So for me, that's a limiting factor. And this is what I learned last year. It's all very well and good having things set in stone and plans, but you might find that you won't actually be able to do any of that because the ground's rock hard it's pissing down when it's not rock hard or people sort of don't want you there because of the in-between weather conditions so it's all very well and good planning for winter work and putting you know winter jobs ahead but you might not be able to do them and i thought about this last year with a whole winter russell series i'll get onto that in a bit i thought right i'll have winter work coming out of my ears potentially but i thought to myself what would i have done it, I would have had to put it off because there's just when it's absolutely lashing down for days on end and the ground is soggy, you know, you, so you know you're going to be there and bollocks in the ground up and getting mud everywhere. I don't want it if I'm being honest with you. That's why I'm glad I did the exterior cleaning because at least I'm on solid ground. I'm not, you know, doing border work in the rain and stuff. So for me, making that decision was financially better and the quality of life but i'll get on to that in a bit so you could look at leaving work throughout the season what i do with new customers is i word them up so if it's a regular thing you know regular maintenance i'll say to them you get two visits a month on a two weekly basis and then winter time i'll be here once a month what you work over winter yeah i say i'm a full-time gardener i say i'm self-employed so for me winter work is just as important as summer work oh well, uh, yeah, well, I do want my property. Yeah, I says, don't worry. There's, there's stuff that could be done over winter. I says, I want your property to look nice all year round. Great. Some people love you for that. I've got customers that have me all year round because they want the property looking nice. Now, these first two things I've just said about leaving work and then wording customers up, they only work as good as when the customer wants you to work for them. Now, I had this last year where I worded customers up. And for the 10 customers, I worded up and they agreed. And it was written on a quote, you know, so they knew they couldn't get out of it. 
I think about 70, about seven of them cancelled. Now, they didn't cancel and get rid of me because I'm coming back this year. But it was, oh, I don't know what there's to do. There's not much to do. Weather's crap. Uh, I'll see you next year. Stuff like that. So don't put your eggs in all one basket. I'll be honest with you. It's like you've got to cast a big net for winter work. Because, and then the flip side is, is with, be careful putting work off. Weigh your customer up. Do you think they're going to keep you over winter? Push work. Because trust me, I've done it with some customers where I've said, we can get them shrubs and hedges done over winter. And then they've made every excuse under the sun and it's been done in the start of the season. So just, you know, weigh that up because some customers... And it's weird. Some customers, you can cram in as much work during the season and they'll probably overspend. And then they'll quite happily let it all go to rack and ruin. And then when you first start again, you'll be there chasing your tail, doing extra visits, extra hours, spending more of their money to get the place back up to scratch. But if they would have just had you a couple of hours a week, a month over the winter, they would have saved money. So people don't think like this. And I've tried to explain this and they, they don't get it. And I think it's because some people have this mentality of I'm not in the garden. I'm not getting the benefit of it. I'm not enjoying it. So why should I spend money on it? Some people also look out for us. So they'll say to me, oh, I don't want you. It's crap weather. I don't want you getting poorly or working in it. Don't worry. I've got a million hoodies, a million coats in my van. I said, if I get wet, I can change into a new one. Oh, well, if you're happy with that. I've got some customers where, and this is what I'm getting on to now, don't be afraid to take on different work. If you like me and you start, you know, this is my third year now, so I'm very much still, I'm just getting there where it's, you know, getting good, getting very profitable, but, you know, winters aren't there for me. Now, I've done not anything, and I wouldn't say I've took on shit work, but I've took on different work than I would have normally. So one winter, first winter, I was helping one of my customers move house. She's a disabled lady. Um, she hasn't got many family or many relatives around. So I was helping her move house. So I did, I think I did three hours a day. <laughs> uh, I was emptying a loft, fucking hell. I was packing the clothes up, packing the stuff up. But that meant for me, I was, in, I was indoors all winter, pretty much. And I had a, a good sort of decent payout for that. So, you know, don't be afraid to sort of look elsewhere or inquire. Next was, I had one winter where one of my customers, she's a lovely lady, she said to me about, uh, oh, we know winter's a bit quiet, so we've saved you some jobs. So I had a full day painting garden ornaments. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, but for me, that was a full day's wage under a carport painting you know regular cups of tea i couldn't complain another tip for you is tell customers this is very basic but some people honestly think that we go to the bahamas for four months out of the year you know they think that we go away for winter and we don't work or we go back to our full-time jobs or we hibernate or fly south so tell people you work over winter um, you've got winter slots available for tidy up, you know, bore, anything you want to say, tell people. Because people don't think we work over winter. And it's crazy. That's why I, I'm very honest with people that this is my full-time job and I'm a self-employed guard in the UK. I tell them all this. So they've got the facts and they know. Another thing or another tip I have is the Christmas cards. Because when you go... September, October, November, you're off their radar then. But what I do is then I reintroduce myself at Christmas time. Well, you know, two or three weeks before Christmas. Knock on. Oh, uh, you're not here to see the guard. Then no, no, I'm just dropping your card off and I've got your little pot of jam. Oh, okay then. Uh, I get get chatting with him, talk to him, look at the garden. God, the leaves have come back. I got all that. Oh, yeah, it's looking ever so. Oh, it's looking ever so messy. Get it on their radar. Oh, um, I have actually got some slots of it. Do you want me to just give you a tidy up before? Oh, will you? Oh. See, you know, stuff like that. Now, the other one 
is I'm not going to talk about it too much because I keep banging this drum. I don't want you to think that I'm a one track person. Diversification. How about looking at doing additional services that are a bit more permanent that you can then offer all year round so it's another cash flow. So for me, I did the gutters, I did fascia cleans, power washing. I did a whole exterior cleaning business. There's plenty of videos on it. Now, I quickly found out that because people ask about gutter cleaning over winter. Yes, it's profitable. It's profitable September, November, December, October, sorry, October, September, October, November. Then three months, bangers. December, you've got frosts. What happens when it frosts? The fucking stuff in the gutters is welded in. You can't get it out. Then you're having to make excuses. Then you're having to cancel. Face your clean. Yep, nice and straightforward. You can do that on a nice day. Your poles freeze up. Your pole, your hose in the pipe freezes up. Your backpack freezes up. So you've got to keep it forward out. You thaw it out. You go to your first job. You've left the hose on the floor. The ground's frozen solid. It freezes that pipe. It's that cold. And the pipe's only got like a 4 mil ID inside. It's very, very small pipe. That freezes. Then you're like, oh, for God's sake. You know, so this year with my exterior cleaning, I'm looking at doing hot water. So, you know, I've got that heat source. I've got that radiant heat. You know, I've got something in place where the van, but we're going into a different conversation. But don't be afraid to take on additional services. Uh, but whatever you're going to do, start thinking about it now. I know it's a fucking morbid for oh it's Christmas we've not we've not even got through the season we haven't we've just had Easter egg day for crying out loud but just bear it in mind think about it because whatever you do you're going to need a pot of money behind you so save for it now because when it comes too close you know it's too late then so have a good day guys as usual keep on gardening.